leg into this position and think you're going to sink through the, into the piriformis, there's no way you're going to do it. You're going to be treating gluteal fascia, which is very, very important, and I understand why it's important. But because of this misconception that you can actually get to the piriformis in this way, a lot of people overdiagnose piriformis problems, and they say that the piriformis is tight. The piriformis in this position is not necessarily tight. What you're feeling is a tightening of the overlying gluteal fascia, which is true. Overlying gluteal fascia is very tight, and it's very important when you're treating low back patients. But if we layer through the gluteus maximus in this position, when you start to palpate the piriformis itself, you're going to realize that it's not as involved as you once thought. So when you can actually palpate into the piriformis and you can check the range, very rarely you're going to find that the piriformis uh, is, is important to clinicians. Okay? There is trigger points that can occur in the, in the piriformis or the irritations of the, of the innervating nerve, which can cause referral patterns down the leg. But there's a problem with diagnosing a piriformis syndrome and diagnosing a piriformis trigger. In the literature, they, they call piriformis syndrome and they, they talk about it as a nerve entrapment in one breast as a referral in another breast. But a nerve entrapment is not necessarily a referral. A true piriformis syndrome would have to be a frictional irritation, quote unquote, entrapment of the sciatic nerve in the piriformis, in which case you have to have radicular type symptoms. But just because you have pain down the leg into the, the heel, which is reproduced by touching the piriformis, doesn't mean the sciatic nerve is involved. Because the referral pattern for the piriformis is directly down the leg and into the heel. Okay? So it's very, very rare to ever find a piriformis syndrome if you're talking about it as a nerve entrapment. It doesn't matter that in 20% of the people that the uh, sciatic nerve goes through the piriformis. Because if you've ever seen a sciatic nerve in dissection, you know that the nerve is about that thick and you know that it's so strong that just because it travels and traverses through the piriformis, the piriformis would have to be so tight and locked down on it constantly, it, 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 would, be, it would be very difficult for that to cause that many problems. There's a lot of areas in the body where nerves pierce muscles, and we don't get these problems. So just because an anomaly can occur, it doesn't mean that's the cause of the So you have to determine, is this a referral, or is this a ridiculous problem? Is this a neural irritation, or is it simply a referral problem that's uh, having uh, referral symptoms due to the uh, way that the brain and the sensory cortex interpreting the signal.